Hello, my name is Carol Bernard. I am the co-founder of Gabology.com, and I'm here today to help you answer a simple question, which is, are you a small business? Well, it seems like a simple question, right? Truth is, not really, and it can actually get a little confusing, especially if you follow the definition for small business set forth by the U.S. Small Business Administration. We will get to that in a second. But first, how about a fun fact? Did you know that you may be considered both small and at the same time other than small in the eyes of the federal government? <gasps> That's right. The federal government's definition of a small business can vary depending on what industry you're in and also may depend on whether you are a manufacturer, distributor, reseller, or service provider. Let's break it down for you with a little example. But before we do that, here are some things that you need to know. Number one, your company size is defined by the NAICS codes relevant to your business and your average annual receipt over the last three years or number of employees, but it can be both. Number two, NAICS codes are six digit codes used by the federal government to classify industries and is an acronym for the North American Industry Classification System. Number three, Many federal contractors have multiple NAICS codes in their vendor profile because the goods and services they sell can fall across several industries. And number four, because different NAICS codes carry different size standards, this is how some businesses can be considered both small and other than small at the same time in the eyes of the federal government. <laughs> Still confused? Okay, here's an example. Sample Contractors LLC, we'll call them SCL, performs work as a general contractor as well as a specialty trade electrical contractor. They also have an electrical supply division. This contractor has average annual receipts over the last three years totaling $20 million and 50 employees. SCL has identified three NAICS codes which would be relevant to their business and those are shown here in the table below. So let's take a look at them. The first one is 236220. The description is commercial and institutional building construction. Now, if we look to the right under size standard, the size standard set forth by the SBA is 36 and a half million. And because SCL has averaged 20 million over the last three years, that means that they would be a small business relevant to that NAICS code. Next, we have 238210, which is the NAICS code for electrical contractors and other wiring installation contractors. Now that carries a size standard of 15 million, and because the average of the three years in the past have been equal to 20 million for SCL, they are not a small business under that particular NAICS code. And the last NAICS code is relevant to their electrical supply division, and that is 335122. And the size standard for that is 500 employees. And because SCL has only 50 employees, they're well under that size standard, so they would be considered a small business in this instance. For a complete list of NAICS codes, descriptions, and relevant size standards, I recommend downloading the SBA's size standards table from their website. And because at Govology, our goal is to help keep it simple, we created an easy shortcut you can use to get there. Just type in gabology.com forward slash size standards in your web browser and you will be redirected to the SBA's size standards table. You can also get there by doing a web search using the key phrase SBA size standards table. If you happen to sell a commodity item, I would highly recommend that you read my blog article titled Why Distributors and Resellers Must Understand the Non-Manufacturer Rule because this rule has an impact on the NAICS codes you should list in your federal vendor profile. You can find that article at govology.com forward slash NMR. So if you are new to this game, why would it be good to know if you are a small business as defined by the federal government? Reason number one, because the federal government sets aside approximately $100 billion of contracting opportunities each year reserved exclusively for small businesses. Reason number two, if you need funding, you can take advantage of special loans with favorable terms designed specifically for small businesses. 
And reason number three, you can get free support and counseling through SBA funded resource partners, your local SBA district office, and the Department of Defense Procurement Technical Assistance Program. More on that at the end of the video. So how do you determine if you are a small business and qualify for some of these benefits? Here's a quick and easy eight step process to help you figure it out. Step one, go to www.sba.gov forward slash size dash standards. Step two, when you enter this page, hit the start button below the picture. Step three, enter your six digit NAICS code if you happen to know it or if you don't know it, you can also enter a keyword. Based on our example from Sample Contractors LLC, let's say that they didn't know their next code and they used the keyword construction. And as you can see here, when you enter a keyword into the field, it will give you a list of options from which you can choose. Next, if you want to add another industry code, you simply hit the Add Another Industry link. When you're done with that, hit Next and continue on until you've entered all the industries that you want to add. So again, here's SCL Constructions, three NAICS codes that they've entered. So next thing they're going to do is enter their revenue. And we identified that they entered $20 million here. So that was their average annual receipts over the last three years, plus the cost of goods sold. So how did they get to that number? An easy way to find this is that if you look at the profit or loss statement from your last three tax returns, and here we see the 2017 tax return from Sample Contractors LLC, it shows that their gross receipts totaled $20 million. But we also need to look at 2015 and 2016 to get our three-year average. Once you have done that, simply add the three numbers from line one and divide by three. This will give you the number that you will use to enter your revenue. If you are registering or updating your profile in the system for award management, you will also use this formula to answer the same question. And the final step is to enter the number of your full-time and part-time employees over the last 12 months, then hit see results button. Finally, you will get your answer. And as you can see here for sample contractors, LLC, whose average annual revenue over the last three years was $20 million. They are small for the NAICS codes 236220 because they are below the SBA size standard of 36.5 million, but not small under the NAICS code of 238210 because they are above the SBA size standard of 15 million. As for their electrical supply division, they are also considered small because they are well under the 500 employees and this, my friends, is how you accurately calculate your size standard and determine whether or not you are a small business according to the SBA. If you are already registered in the System for Award Management, your profile will display a table similar to the one shown here. Because your revenue changes each year, make sure you also update your revenue and employee totals when you do your annual update, as this may affect your size status each year, especially for those of you who may be just below or just above the size standards because in one year you may be small and then the next year you may not be small and then you have a bad year and you're small again. So there are some, I guess, advantages of having a bad year. Well, that's it for today, but if you need additional help, I recommend the following resources. Number one, contact your local Procurement Technical Assistance Center. This is the free DOD funded resource I mentioned earlier. If you've never heard of the PTAC program, I recommend that you read my blog article, It's Good to Know Your PTAC. You can get there by navigating to govology.com forward slash PTAC. If you don't have a PTAC or would like some other cool free resources, I suggest joining us at Govology. We have a free membership level that will provide you with access to select webinars and on-demand courses, give you notifications about upcoming live webinars, as well as weekly insights, tips, and other news you can use to help you go forth and prosper as a federal contractor. We also have a partnership with many PTACs across the country that can provide you with additional access to even more Gabology training at no cost to you. So make sure that you're leveraging all of the free resources available to you through your PTAC and Gabology. One last request before you go. If you like this video, please share it with a friend, give us a like, 
subscribe to our YouTube channel, or just comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. This is Carol Bernard with Gavology.com, wishing you all the best in business and in life, and I hope to see you again soon.